give you everything Holy angels crown you our king Treasures of this world to you will not compare You know the number of the stars and call them all by name The heavenly lights The glory towers above the earth Let everything in life declare your faithfulness Let all you've done unite to worship you Our risen God
of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of our sins. We will see the gift of the Holy Spirit to God be the glory as Father He created all to God. to learn and talk about the Bible from a bigger perspective down to its smallest detail? Catch us every Wednesday 7 p.m. via an exclusive YouTube link. Only here on the Teaching Ministries Bible Survey. Hello brothers and sisters. 
You're welcome to join us as we share insights from chapters and stories in the Bible. Relatability and practical theology. Pag-usapan natin yan. Let's, Let's make our, our weekly, weekly devotion a habit. habit. Tune in every Tuesday, 7 p.m. here at Service Force Devotion. nagplano na masama sa anak niya. Eh sigurado ang plano ng Diyos sa atin, puro magaganda ang plano ng Lord sa atin, puro mabubuti ang plano ng Diyos sa atin, at hindi raw kayang bilangin ang plano ng Diyos sa atin dahil ganun tayo kamahal na ating Diyos na buhay. By the power of our Father in heaven, let us claim the victory. His blessings and yes are just prayers away. Together, let us offer our earnest prayers to God. For our brethren, families, friends, and ourselves. My God Connection, every Monday and Friday, 3 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and IGTV. tithes and offering, maraming paraan at madali lang po yan. Pwede kayong mag-transfer via GCash. First, mag-login sa inyong GCash account, i-press ang pay bills, then choose others. I-type at hanapin ng Jesus Christ to God be the Glory Church International. I-type ang inyong pangalan as donor, your mobile number, purpose of donation by selecting kung ang ibibigay ay tithes or G-code at ang inyong desired amount. Confirm your details to complete the transaction. And it's done! Ang bliss lang, di ba? What if from PayMaya? Pwede rin! Just key in our church's account number. Walang GCash, PayMaya, or Coins.ph? Okay lang dahil may PayPal din tayo. Just go to our website, www.jctgbtg.com and click the Give Today button. Bukas pa rin ang ating bank accounts para sa direct and online deposits. These are the account names, account numbers, kung saan ka pwedeng mag-deposit ng inyong tithes and offerings, Project G-Code, and Friends Again pledges. kayo 
magbigay through selected remittance centers. Kapag through Western Union, please write Efren Lopez as receiver and provide this contact number. Kung sa Palawan Express, M. Luwilier at Cebuana Luwilier naman. You can write Efren Lopez or Judith Lagunsad as receiver at gamitin ang number na ito. Para masigurong successful ang inyong pagbibigay, please make sure to message us at ating official Facebook page. With your name, contact number, amount na binigay, reference number, at photo o screenshot ng inyong transaction. To know more about our online giving, contact us at 8711-3698, local 112, or send us a message sa ating official Facebook page or bumisita sa ating website www.jctgbtg.com Thank you for being our partners and sharing the gospel throughout the world. God bless everyone! The Lord is gracious and merciful. Great His kindness and good to all. The Lord is righteous in all. His ways bless the Lord and give Him praise. I will, I will bless the
be to the Lord my God of Israel Had it not been because of you Who be on my side Praise be to His glorious name Eternally Praise the Lord sa pumapagpalang araw sa inyo pong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat sa ating Panginoon. Ganyan sa ating beloved Bishop Louis and Pastor Norma for allowing me to stand before you. At uh, alam ko po na marami tayong natututunan. So hoping nakakasunod po tayo sa dami po ng ating dapat pag-aralan at mga terminologies po na kailangan po natin malaman. Importante po ito na nasusundan po natin para nababalikan po natin o nakakapag-take down notes po tayo. Mahalaga po yan. Kasi po para may apply din po natin sa ating po mga pang-araw-araw na buhay. So mga kapatid, sa hindi po pagtatagal, I would like to request everyone na yuko natin na ating po mga ulo. Tayo po muna yung humihingang gabay sa ating Panginoon. Lord, we thank you so much, Panginoon, again, for this opportunity na binigay mo po sa amin na minsan pa makapag-aral ng salita mo. Ikaw po ang manguna po sa amin. Hayaan mo, Panginoon, O God, na you feed us with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Panginoon, O God, sa mga salita na ituturo mo, hayaan mo, Lord, na ang aming mga puso at ang aming mga isip ay maging bukas, Panginoon, O God, sa pakikinig, Panginoon. Ikaw po ang manguna, basbasang mo yung balikod, layo mo kami spirit of error sa mga technical issues. And Lord, I pray, ng mga kasama namin na uwi galing sa trabaho, sa malalayong lugar, ay umabot po sa aming pong pag-aaral. Basbasa mo rin, Panginoon, ang mga kasama ko dito sa studio na mag air ng programa mo. Lord, I pray that you anoint each and every one of us at hayaan mo ikaw manguna po sa aming magbula sa umpisa hanggang sa matapos, O oh God. Salamat po, all the six we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So praise God mga kapatid, last week we have uh, finished the first part of our series regarding po sa Jordan River. So napag-usapan po natin that it is uh, related with water baptism. But tonight we are going to learn more as we proceed with part 2. So which is the significance of crossing the Jordan River. So mga kapatid, what is the significance of crossing the Jordan River? So, brothers and sisters, mahirap po kasing intindihin ang halaga po ng pangyayari pong ito kung hindi po natin i-consider yung pong lahat na mga pinagdaanan po ng mga Israelita hanggang sa point po na yon. So, kung tutusin, yung pong pagtakas o yung pong pag-alis po nila sa Egypt na, na supposedly aabutin lang ng mga dalawang linggo ay inabot po ng 40 years sa paglipas po ng ilang generation. So, can you imagine... You, you, you being stuck with your family on a vacation, that never ends. So, kumbaga, yung uwing-uwi ka na. Pero parang hindi yata matatapos yung bakasyon ninyo. So, yung ine-expect mo na sandali lang, umabot ng ilang taon. At madalas po, ay natatagpuan po natin ng ating po mga sarili in the state of crossing at yung pong transition after sa mga panahon po of being stuck in a wilderness or troubles in life. So, hindi na po tayo makausad. Dahil nga po sa tindi, sa dami po na dumarating po sa buhay na natin, lalo na yung mga problema, naiipit ka na dyan. So, para po sa Israel, sa Old Testament po, ito po yung isang literal na wilderness of heat. Nandyan, yung hunger, gutom, and yung pong exhaustion. Talagang, talagang mapapagod ka, magiging exhausted ka. So, perhaps, hindi tayo makarelate to being stuck in a literal desert. Unless, na, na experience po natin na maglakad po rito or pumunta po rito, nandun talaga na, na yung araw, matindi sikat ng araw at uh, wala kang tubig sa desyerto, wala kang matagpuan tubig. So, pero, 
naniniwala po ako na sa ibang bagay ay makaka-relate po tayo. However, have you ever experienced a wilderness in your life? So, metaphorically speaking, perhaps makaka-relate po tayo to being in a place in life where we feel stuck. Makaka-relate po tayo. Na hindi na tayo makaalis doon. So, kumbaga doon na umiikot yung mundo po natin, lalo na po sa problema. Ibig sabihin, no matter what we do, no matter how many times na i-recalculate natin yung rota po natin, it gets us up right back doon sa kung saan tayo nagsimula. Balik po tayo ng balik po doon. Kahit ilang beses na po natin pinipilit na makaalis, pero sa bandang huli, babalik ulit po tayo doon sa umpisa. While, ang iba naman po are experiencing yung pong kakulangan sa fulfillment in their relationships, sa, ang iba sa health, ang iba sa career, and even ang iba po sa destiny at yung pong kanilang purpose sa kanilang buhay. At yung iba naman po, baka nawawala na po ng pag-asa sa mga, ba- mga bagay that, that ev- things ever changing for the better. Hindi nagbabago, yun pa rin. Pangit pa rin. Kaya nga po ang nagiging resulta, they have decided to tread those same na well-worn, familiar na mga, na mga daanan. Katulad ng bitterness, yung hopelessness, at yung pong pagiging talunan. So, ibig sabihin, sumuko ka na. Nag-give up ka na. So, para bagang tinanggap mo na lang na wala ka na magagawa, yan na talaga. So, naging commonplace na po para tanggapin po yung, yung sitwasyon mo bilang status ko mo na. So, pagkatapos, ay iiyak ka ngayon sa Diyos. Nakatulad po ng mga Israelita, basahin po natin in Numbers 20 verse 5. Why have you made us come up from Egypt to bring us into this wretched place? So, bakit mo kami dinala dito sa lugar na ito? Yan ang sabi nila. So, ibig sabihin, umiiyak po sila sa Diyos. Umiiyak po sila sa ating Panginoon. However, brothers and sisters, let's proceed to getting a place of spiritual crossing. So, ibig sabihin, tatawid naman po tayo sa spiritual na viewpoint. Papaano po natin wawasakin or ibe-break yung pong wilderness cycle at makarating po doon sa lugar ng pagtawid? Brothers and sisters, kung tayo po'y magiging tapat lang po sa ating po mga sarili, maraming beses tayo po'y nagiging co-authors po kasi of our own predicaments, yung pong ating mga hardships. At hindi po yung mga, hindi po mga, mga participants lamang. So, brothers and sisters, life is unpredictable. Kaya nga sinabi sa John chapter 16, verse 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me, you may have peace, ang sabi ng Panginoon. In the world, you will have tribulation. Ulitin ko ang sabi, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So here, Jesus himself tells us that in this life, we will have troubles, we will have tribulations, we will have problems, we will have hardships. However, supposedly hindi po yan makakasakit po sa atin. If we will check our hearts pagdating po sa ating po mga pag-uugali, especially pag tayo po nasa wilderness ng sarili nating buhay, at kailangan po nating tumawid doon sa sarili nating Jordan River. So, wag po nating hayaan na dyan na lang po tayo umikot. Yung, yung pumundo po natin sa mga problema po natin sa buhay. At puro yan na lang po ang iniintindi po natin. But rather, mas bantayan po natin yung ating po mga puso. Yan po ang gusto ng Panginoon, yung heart po natin. Kailangan bantayan po natin. So, meaning, first, it is a matter of heart. Brothers and sisters, all throughout the scriptures, tayo po'y inutusan po ng Lord na to love the Lord our God. And we are also commanded to worship Him only, to meditate on His Word day and night. So meaning, ano man ang problema mo sa buhay, ang hardships mo sa buhay, ang troubles mo sa buhay, ang puso po natin must be focused on loving God. Kaya lang ang tanong sa paano pong paraan. Brothers and sisters, we are instructed to set our hearts upon Him. Dahil po, yung kanya po mga salita is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. 
Ayun po yun. So that means, focusing our hearts on God means focusing on His Word. Para saan? Para po i-clear po yung ating pong path. Despite yung pong darkness of life in the wilderness because yung pong kanyang salita ay magsisilbi pong lamp to your feet and a light to your path. But unfortunately, yung pong kakulangan po ng spiritual discipline, yung pong personal time of prayer, yung pong pagbabasa po ng salita ng Diyos, and hearing the word of God every week leaves us open. Saan? To our own faulty thinking and understanding. Yun po ang problema. At yan po ang madalas na nagiging problema ng maraming tao. Ang iba po, they forsake the fellowship of believers. Lumalayo sa Panginoon. At ang mabigat po dyan, ang iba po'y naniniwala pa po sa ibang mga philosophies and ways of being that are not of God. Yun po ang masaklap, yun po ang masakit. Kaya po ang resulta, they drift away from God as said in Romans chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, kahit na alam nila or kilala nila ang Diyos, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened, dumilim yung kanila mga puso, nagdilim ang kanila mga puso. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Brothers and sisters, pag ito po ang nangyari, then, yung pong breakdown of spirituality begins with the breakdown of spiritual discipline. So ito po yung kailangan po natin, pero madalas marami po ang nagkukulang po dito. Mga kapatid, life is busy. At kuminsan, yung po mga disappointing things happen that, that uh, discourage us from seeking God. Nangyayari po yan, hindi natin maiwasan. Mayat maya, may mga disappointments po tayo. But take note, we should seek Him always. Even sa panahon po ng grief, even sa panahon po ng pain, kailangan hanapin mo ang Diyos. In fact, the Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So this meant seeking God is not easy. But you must be persistent. You must be consistently praying. Take no praying until you feel that your spirit is crushed, until you feel that your spirit is broken and your heart is contrite. That will lead you to the presence of God and be closer to Him. Second, it is a matter of the attitude, yung pong ugali. Alam nyo mga kapatid, the best way to understand yung pong pagre-reklamo is to think of lamenting without, take note, lamenting without faith. Katulad po ng Israel in Exodus chapter 14, verse 11. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Dahil walang mapaglilibigan sa Egypt, kaya dito mo kami dinila sa wilderness. Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Here, brothers and sisters, they were complaining. Pero mga kapatid, it is normal to complain. At sabihin po natin yung ating po mga grievances sa ating Panginoon. At karamihan po ng salmis, ganyan po. But take note, there is hope. Meron pong pag-asa. Because in Psalms 42 verse 5, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. Kanino raw? Hope in God. Ang pag-asa ay sa Diyos. For I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. So here, David cries out to God in his depression and grief. Umiyak siya sa Panginoon. 
Yet, take note, He places hope in God. Na nangako po sa Kanya na i-re-restore po siya. So meaning, kung magba-voice out ka man na mga reklamo mo, pagdating sa dulo, dapat ay sa Diyos ka pa rin aasa. Sa Diyos ka pa rin sa sandal at hihingi po ng habag. Mga kapatid, we all have points sa buhay po natin that instead of trusting God, we lose our faith. At minsan, nawawala na tayo ng tiwala sa mga pangako po niya. Kaya po ang nangyari, pumapasok po yung galit po sa puso. Assuming that our suffering is for nothing. At yan po ang hindi maganda. Because ang resulta po niyan ay discouragement. Nakatulad po na nangyari po kay Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. Basahin natin. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Sinabi ni Ahab lahat ng ginawa ni Elijah dito po kay, kay Jezebel. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then, ito po si Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me. And more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Kung hindi ko gawin yung buhay mo na katulad ng buhay ng isa sa kanila, kinabukasan sa ganitong oras. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Nung nakita niya, tumakbo siya. And went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey. Nag-travel siya, day's journey, into the wilderness. Take note. He traveled in the wilderness, day's journey in the wilderness. And came and sat down under a broom tree. Umupo po siya sa broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. Ulitin ko ang sabi niya, he prayed, ang sabi ng Bible, he prayed that he might die. And said, it isn't enough. Now, Lord, take my life. Kunin mo na yung buhay ko, for I am no better than my fathers. So sa madalit sabi, to cut the story short, parang nagtampo po siya sa Diyos. Na-discourage po siya up to the point na gusto na niyang mamatay. However, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 to 5, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. Sinunog po yung Ziklag. And had taken captive the women and those were there. Kinuha po, kinapture po, kinaptig po yung mga babae, pati yung mga nandun. From small to great, they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. Verse 3, So ito po si David and his men came to the city. And there it was burned with fire and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. So, sinunog po yung lugar. Then, David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept. Nag-iyakan ngayon yung mga tao until they had no more power to weep. Hanggang sa wala na silang lakas para umiyak. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Kaya po, ang naging resulta po in verse 6, ano po ang nangyari? Now, David was greatly distressed. Ayun po ang nangyari. Na-distress po si David. For the people spoke of stoning him. Pinag-usapan ng mga tao na babatuin siya because the soul of all the people was grieved. Nag-grieve yung mga tao doon, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David, ano ginawa niya? He strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Take note, ang sabi ng Bible, David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Meaning to say, sobrang discouraged po si David sa nangyari po sa kanya. Kaya sigurado ang nasa puso niya, yung, yung pong pagtatanong, bakit pinaitulot ng Diyos sa, sa kanya yun? Pero at the end of the day, he encouraged himself in the Lord. In-encourage yung sarili niya. So, ibig sabihin, even though he was greatly discouraged at nagtampo siya at maraming katanungan sa ating Panginoon sa puso po niya, pero sa dulo, sa Diyos pa din po siya kumapit, sa Diyos pa rin po siya nagsumiksik, sa Diyos pa rin po siya tumakbo. Now, thirdly, it is a matter of humility. Brothers and sisters, ang repentance po, 
is foundational in experiencing po yung pong turnaround ng ating pong mga buhay. And I just want you to know, the longer we continue to be unrepentant and remain stuck in our ways, mas lalong lumalalim po ang kasalanan po natin. Mas lalo lang po tayo nababaon sa kasalanan. And all the more na wala tayong spiritual discipline at umaasa po tayo sa sarili po natin pangunawa, hindi po natin alam, all the more our unrepentant nature will ensnare us. Lalo tayong mapapahamak. So, ibig sabihin, once you justify your mistakes or your sins, there is no room for spiritual discipline. Kasi nga, gina-justify natin. Lalo ka lang mapapahiwalay sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. Bakit ko po sinabi? There was a story in First Samuel chapter 15. Ito po yung story po ni King Saul. Si King Saul po, he justified his sins. Inutusan po siya. Si, ni, ni, ni Samuel, ito po si King Saul, para patayin lahat ng Amalekites. But unfortunately, ang ginawa po ni King Saul, instead na patayin po lahat, dahil yun po yung utos sa kanya, instead na patayin lahat, ubusin lahat, wala pong itira, inispare niya po si Agag. At yung po mga sheep, yung oxen, pati yung mga fatlings. Kasi po ang katwiran niya, katwiran nila, Ina, ina, ito po yung the best daw ang itinirin lala para isacrifice sa ating Panginoon. So, meaning to say, ginastify niya po yung ginawa niyang kasalanan. Ano po ang sabi ni Samuel sa kanya? To obey is better than sacrifice. Kaya ano po nangyari? The Lord rejected him from being king. Dahil doon sa kasalanan niya, dahil doon sa pag-justify niya, ang nangyari, nireject siya ng Panginoon. Why? He could not accept his mistake. Yun ang problema. Pinipilit pa niyang i-justify. Mga kapatid, I believe that there are some Christians, hindi ko naman po nila lahat, mga kapatid. There are some who are doing the same thing. Hindi nila matanggap yung kanilang mga mali o yung kanilang mga kasalanan. While no matter where we are in life, hindi natin alam that Jesus Christ is always ready to meet us there. Hindi natin alam na kumakatok po ang ating Panginoon sa ating po mga puso para papasukin po siya. And we are never too far gone para tanggapin po yung kanya pong habag, yung kanya pong biyaya. Binibigyan po tayo ng pag-asa ng Diyos because while we were yet sinners, He died for us in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. So that means, kahit gaano po kalaki, kahit gaano po kabigat ang nagawa natin kasalanan sa ating Panginoon, kaya kanyang patawarin. Patatawarin ka ng Diyos. Meanwhile, let's proceed with crossing the Jordan River, which is your place of transition. Mga kapatid, I just want you to know na yung po ng silbing border also represents na isa pong tulay sa bago nating buhay. For our information, ang iba pong mga rivers have more beauty. Mas maganda Mas maraming mas mahaba sa Jordan River. Ang iba mas malinis kaysa sa Jordan River. Pero, take note, brothers and sisters, no river has garnered as much affection as the Jordan River. Actually po, there is a good reason behind it. Brothers and sisters, hindi po yung ganda ng Jordan River na nag-inspired po for centuries Dito po sa Psalms, sa, 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 sa hymns, sa mga spiritual song, para i-include it sa kanilang mga verses. But it was crossing the Jordan River. Yung pumpagtawid sa Jordan River. And kung ano po yung ibig sabihin po nung pagtawid na yun. Yung pong significance ng Jordan River began as a simple geographic barrier. Which, practically speaking, represented po a border in Joshua chapter 22 verses 18 to 25. In fact, meron pong serpentine river. Ito po'y patuloy na nag nagre-represent po ng border between po sa Israel at sa Jordan. Pero sa Biblia po, ang presensya po ng Jordan River sa Israel's east eastern edge stood as an enduring metaphor for transitions. 
And I just want you to know that these transitions, ito pong mga pagbabago or mga changes na ito, uh, point directly to our life as well. Now, ano-ano po yung mga transitions na yun? First, let's check on Joshua's transition at the Jordan River. So, mga kapatid, it began the conquest. Yung pong pagtawid sa Jordan River for Joshua meant entering the promised land and leaving the leadership of Moses. So, if you remember last time po, last week, nabanggit ko po sa inyo that the, when the priest of God rather left the Jordan's eastern banks at sila po'y nag-step doon sa current, sa Jordan River. So, the river stopped flowing. Kaya nakatawid po sila. In fact, sa jo- si Joshua po made a fundamental comparison in Joshua chapter 4, verse 23. Tignan po natin. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, ayun na, kinumper niya na sa Red Sea, which He dried up before us until we had crossed over. So ano po, mapupuna po ninyo? Joshua connected yung pong kanilang matinding redemption bilang isang bansa to the same power of God na tinulungan sila to enter the promised land. So we're in dun po sila nag-erect dun pong labing dalawang bato from the Jordan River to commemorate the event. Now, yung pong pangalawang transition is Elisha's transition. So, ito naman po, preparing for exile. So, this is another significant transition na nangyari po sa, sa same location sa Jordan. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8, Now, Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Si Elijah tsaka si Elisha po tinutukoy rito. So, dito po si Elijah transferred the mantle to Elisha just before Elijah ascended to heaven with a whirlwind. Naalala natin yan last week. And as it had done in, in the, the shift, magmula po kay Moses to Joshua. So, the Jordan River parted para po kay Elijah at kay Elisha na nakatawid on dry ground. Now, pangatlong transition. This is regarding Jesus' transition. It began the new covenant. Alam niyo, mga kapatid, hindi na po nakakataka kung bakit pinili po ni John the Baptist yung same area to baptize. Dahil ito po, Jordan River represented a place of transition. So, in fact, of new beginnings. So, ito po naging lugar where John baptized Jesus Christ. But instead of the waters, mapapansin po ninyo, instead of the waters parting, yung pong langit po ang bumukas as found in Mark chapter 1, verse 10. Basahin natin. And immediately, coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting. Ayun, nakita niya yung langit na bumukas and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. So, ibig sabihin, the heavens opened. However, I just want you to know that the Jordan River, which is a place of transition, ay nananatili pong isang mahalagang, mahalagang simbolo ng pagbabago or ng transition. Yung po mga transitions that occurred there were sometimes national. Nakatulad po ni Moses at saka po ni Joshua, ni Elijah, and ni Elisha, and even si John the Baptist at ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Pero yung po mga area po ay meron din po mga personal po na transitions. Even yung mga conversions po nila as in the case of Rahab, ni Naama, ni Zacchaeus, and Bartimaeus. So, maging ito man ay national, maging personal man yan, or maging parehas man yan, national at personal man yan, any new beginning also requires an ending. It requires leaving one shore and crossing the river for another. Iiwan mo yung, yung dati at tatawid ka doon sa river, sa, sa susunod. Ibig sabihin, the fourth transition is your transition from death to life. Yung po yung pang-apat. Yung pong pagpasok po sa promised land sa pamamagitan po ng pagtawid sa Jordan River ay nananatiling timeless na simbolo ng pagtawid mula sa kamatayan patungo sa buhay na walang hanggan. 
Gaya po na sinabi po sa book of Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 10. So as Joshua pointed out, pagkatapos tumawid sa, sa Jordan River, the same grace of God that redeemed them ay yung grace that led them home in Joshua chapter 4 verse 23. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. As the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over. And the same is true sa atin in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ibig sabihin, ganun din po tayo. It was the same grace that redeemed us. Same grace din. Yun din grace na yun. Kung ano yung nasa kanilang grace, yun din yung napunta sa atin. Apparently, mga kapatid, we need to pass through Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, at yung pong Jordan River. Kaya lang ang tanong, what for? For the new creation there is a story in the Old Testament regarding kay Elijah the prophet at yung kanyang yan, yan pong disciple. Ito mong si Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 2 verses 1 to 15. Kayo na lang po ang magbasa. Dito po, we see that ito po si Elijah was about to be raptured. So sinabihan niya si Elisha to stay in that place where they, where they were dahil tinawag siya ng Diyos to, to go to Gilgal. Ang sabi ni Elisha, As Jehovah lives and as your soul lives, I will never leave you, ang sabi ni Elisha. Kaya sumama po siya sa Gilgal kay Elijah. So the same thing happened again. God called Elijah to go to Bethel, then Jericho, then to cross the Jordan River. So eventually, after he passed, doon sa Jordan River, sa pamamagitan po ng pagrap po ng kanyang mantle and dividing the waters, then passing through doon sa dry ground, God raptured Elijah through a whirlwind. Si Elijah po is a type of the Old Testament age. At ito naman po si Elisha is a type of the New Testament age. So mga kapatid, lahat pong itong apat na stasyon na ito, Elijah visited, are very significant. At yung unang bagay that is striking regarding kay Elijah at saka kay Elisha is that ito pong si Elisha did not start his own ministry. But, take note, continued Elijah's ministry. Pinagpatuloy niya yung ministry ni Elijah. Hindi siya nagsimula ng bago. But rather, tinuloy niya yung kay Elijah. So, it is the same thing that took place with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, he did not start his own ministry. But rather, he entered into John the Baptist's ministry and then continued with this ministry. Also, just as, as it happened with Elisha, so is with us. Ganon din po sa atin. Kung gusto po natin ma yung pong outpouring ng Holy Spirit, and if we want to be raptured, we also need to pass through these four stations. Kailangan dumaan tayo dun sa sinasabing four stations na yun. Now, what are those four stations? Uli ko, unang-una or first is the Gilgal. Ito po yung lugar na yung lahat po ng mga young generation from the people of Israel na pinanganak sa wilderness were circumcised since they have not been circumcised. It boy signifies the fact that we, the people of God, need to deal with our flesh. Yung ating mga laman, yung physical na katawan. Now, what is the flesh? It is simply the uttermost expression of the entire fallen being or you fallen human being. Ibig sabihin, ulitin ko, yung physical na katawan natin mismo. Kaya nga, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. At ang flesh po is everything na tinanggap po natin since birth or from birth. Yan po tinanggap natin, yung flesh natin. Yung laman po natin. Not just the negative things, 
or the unpleasant na, na, na aspects po of our disposition and our being. But even our natural kindness, our talents, our gifts, our energies, our strength, our wisdom, our abilities, etc. and etc. Lahat ng mga bagay na ito need to be dealt with sa pamamagitan po ng cross. Sa cross po. So that we may be ushered into the New Testament age in our experience so that we may be the new creation in full. Bago na nila lang, buong buo. Araw-araw, kailangan po natin yung pong constant application ng cross of Calvary through the Spirit in our experience. At sa pamamagitan po na Spirit po ng Lord, we put to death yung pong mga practices po ng laman or ng katawan. Even more in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Take note. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Dito po malino na sinabi that we are the circumcision. Tayo po mismo yun. At tayo po yung mga tao na dapat po nagka-cut off po ng flesh, ng laman. Tayo po dapat yung mga tao who serve by the Spirit of God. Tayo po dapat yung mga tao who boast in Christ Jesus. Tayo po yung mga tao na dapat have no confidence in the flesh. Yan po dapat tayo. Pangalawang station, mga kapatid. Ito pong Bethel. This is the place where God appeared to Abraham and he built an altar. So this signifies yung pong absolute consecration to God and intimate communion and fellowship with God. So bilang pagtugon po sa pagdating po ng Diyos sa ating pong buhay at pagbuhos po ng kanyang Espiritu Santo, kinoconsecrate po natin ang ating pong mga sarili para po sa Kanya. Pagkatapos po nito, Abraham called on the name of Jehovah. So, we need God's appearing, mga kapatid. Kailangan gumawa po tayo ng altar in, in our experience. We need to consecrate ourselves and put everything on the altar. At kailangan nating tawagin ang pangalan ng ating Panginoon. This is the life of Bethel. Ibig sabihin, yung pong pamumuhay na may malalim na relasyon sa Diyos. At araw-araw na pagiging banal sa kanyang harapan para sa kanyang layunin. Katulad po ni Abraham, kahit na tumaligod po siya sa Diyos at lumayo po siya sa Diyos, tulad ng pagpagtungo po nila sa Egypt, pero bumalik siya sa Bethel. So, ibig sabihin, tumungo man tayo sa Egypt, mag-backslide sa world, pwede tayong bumalik sa malalim na relasyon po natin sa Diyos at yung pong pagiging banal sa Kanyang harapan. Pwedeng, pwedeng, pwede. At binibigyan tayo ng pagkakataon ng Diyos para bumalik. Thirdly, or the third station, ang Jericho po, it signifies God's enemy. Satan. Wala nang iba. So, ito po ang ibig sabihin is curse in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. Basahin po natin. Then Joshua charged them at that time saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city, Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn and with his youngest, he shall set up its gates. So, ibig sabihin, curse yung pong salitang Jericho. As we stand with the Lord, eventually, ano po ang mangyari in Romans chapter 16, verse 20? And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Ulitin ko. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Ibig sabihin, ang Diyos ng kapayapaan ay wawasakin po si Satanas under our feet. So we, we fight the battle in the body, 
sa pamamagitan po ng pag-deny po ng ating po mga sarili and taking the way of one accord. At ang Diyos naman po crushes Satan under our feet. However, let's go to the fourth station. Yung pong pang-apat is Jordan. This signifies death. Ano po ang ibig sabihin? Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. So he fulfilled all righteousness sa pamamagitan po ng pagpasok po sa ministry of that age, which was John's ministry. So para magawa at mapagpatuli po niya yung pong kanyang ministry of the age. So, nung nabaptize po ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at inihiyag po na bilang tao na nasa laman ay wala siyang silbi maliban sa kamatayan sa paglili- at sa paglilibing. Bumukas po yung langit. Bumaba po ang Spiritus Santo ng Panginoon at nagpahayag ng pagkilala ang Ama. At katulad din po sa panahon po natin, kailangan natin mamuhay sa katotohanan ng bautismo, ng baptism, na napagtagumpayan natin ang kamatayan sa pamamagitan ng kapangyarihan ng kanyang muling pagkabuhay. Pag dininay po natin ang katawan po natin, ang flesh po natin, ang laman po natin, at nabubuhay ng may kabanalan, ay bumubukas po ang langit. Para sa atin po, bumubukas po yan. At bumababa po yung Holy Spirit ng Diyos po sa atin. At nangungusap po ang Diyos po sa atin. Sa pamamagitan po natin, kinoconfirm na tayo po yung kanyang sinugo. So brothers and sisters, yan po ang significance ng crossing the Jordan River. We have also learned yung pong four transitions, yung four stations, at naway hindi lang po natin ito basta napakinggan, kundi siguraduhin po natin na ito po yung maisa puso po natin. At hindi lang po maisa puso, may apply po natin sa ating pong pang-araw-araw na buhay. But meanwhile, to all our first-time viewers naman po, brothers and sisters, allow me to share with you the gospel of salvation na napakalaki po ang kinalaman pagdating po sa ating pong kaligtasan na importante po ito, kailangan natin mapakinggan. So sa lahat ng mga nakikinig ngayon, yung mga first-time viewers, just a few minutes of your time, pag sinabi po natin kaligtasan, ang sabi po sa Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So malino na sinabi ng talata, For by grace we are saved through faith. Kaya lang po ang tanong, saan po tayo mananampalataya at maniniwala? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4, and sabi rito, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. Uulitin ko, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Sa so, madali sabi, we need to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yung pong death of Christ, yung pong burial of Jesus Christ, at yung pong resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, tatlo po yan, death, burial, and resurrection. Kaya lang po, ang tanong, is believing enough? Sa na po ba na tayo maniniwala? Pag tayo naniwala, wala na tayong gagawin? Alam niyo po ang sabi po sa 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Ano daw ang katatapusan? Ano daw ang dulo doon sa hindi sumunod sa gospel ng ating Panginoon? Sa so madalit sabi, the gospel of Christ must be obeyed. Pag tayo po'y nanampalataya, tayo po'y naniwala, kailangan lakipan po natin ng pagsunod. Importante po na pag tayo po ay maniwala, ay sundin po natin yung gospel. Kaya alam po, the question is, how will you obey? In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, first is repentance. Tayo po'y magsisisi po ng ating po mga kasalanan. We are going to ask for forgiveness. We are going to confess our sins. At hingi tayo ng tawad sa ating Panginoon at naniniwala po ko 
kahit gano'ng kabigat, kahit gano'ng kalaki, katulad na napakinggan natin kanina, but as long as nandun yung genuine repentance, magsisisi tayo, hingi tayo ng tawad, hindi tayo magiging unrepentant na katulad na, napag, na napakinggan natin, kung di tayo'y buong puso or taos puso nagsisisi, naniniwala po ako that the Lord is willing and able to forgive your sins. Diyan di po papasok yung pong death to sin. So yan po yung una, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So tayo naman po, ibabautismo naman po sa tubig, ilulubog po tayo sa tubig. Katulad din po, na nakaraan lingko na pag-aralan natin, we have to cross yung pong tubig or yung pong water, yung true water baptism. So kailangan tayo po, ibautismo in the name of Jesus Christ po yan. At ang sabi po sa Romans chapter 6, verse 4, Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death. Ulitin ko, malinaw, sinabi ng talata, Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So malit sabi, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. At para bagang inililibing din natin ang ating po mga kasalanan, kasabay naman po ng paglilibing kay Kristo. At malaki po ang kinalaman na itong water baptism sa topic po natin ngayon. Last week, at ngayong araw po nito, malaki po ang kinalaman nito. Now, thirdly, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Diyan naman po, papasok ang ating transformation, yung ating mong regeneration sa madalit sabi, tayo'y mababago na po. Nadabanggit po ito sa book of Romans chapter 8, verse 11. In fact, once we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are also receiving power. Aminin niyo man hindi, lahat tayo may kahinaan. And in order for us to overcome those weaknesses, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Kung tayo lang, mahirap magbago. Pero pag nasa iyo ang Holy Spirit, yan po yung tutulong po sa atin para makapagbago ng lubusan. At yan din po ang magpapaalala po sa atin para makasunod sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. So ito po, tatlong ito ay kailangan maganap po sa ating po mga buhay. Unang-una, we need to repent. Second, we need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And third, we need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we call the good news. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So at this moment, sa lahat po ng gusto tumanggap sa ating Panginoon, pwede po ba na itas po ninyo inyong dalawang kamay bilang tanda ng bagsuko? Yuko po ninyo inyong mga ulo. And please repeat after me with this prayer. Panginoong Jesus, lumalapit po ako sa iyo bilang isang makasalanan. Patawarin mo po ako sa lahat ng aking mga pagkakamali at pagkukulang. Sa oras na ito, tinatanggap po kita bilang sariling tagapagligtas at tinatanggap po kita bilang Diyos ng aking buhay. Naniniwala po ako na ikaw ay namatay, ikaw ay nilibing at sa ikatlong araw ay nabuhay na magmuli. Tulungan mo po ako makapagsimula ng bagong buhay at idagdag mo po ako sa iyong kaharian. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Yan po yung first step para po sa second step sa lahat po ng gusto magpababdays. Anya po mga telephone numbers po natin sa baba po ng mga screens po ninyo. Pwede po kayong kumontak dyan, tumawag po dyan para makapagpa-schedule po tayo ng water baptism or otherwise, you can leave a message sa ating FB page. Iwa kayo na mensahe para masagot po namin to give you further instructions. So meanwhile, brothers and sisters, bilang pagtatapos po natin, muli, nais ko po na tayo po lahat tayo yumuko, pikit natin na ating mga mata, tayo po magpasalamat sa ating Panginoon. Lord, maraming maraming salamat sa salita mo. Salamat ngayon po pinakita mo po sa amin, tinuruan mo po kami kung ano po, kung gano'n po ka-importante or what is the significance of crossing the Jordan River. Anon po yung, yung four stations, andun din po yung, yung mga transitions, Panginoon, na talaga pong nakita po namin kung gano'n siya ka-importante sa aming pong mga buhay at related po sa aming pong mga buhay, Panginoon. Hayaan mo lahat ng aming mga pakinggan, Lord, ay tumimo sa aming mga puso, sa aming mga isip, at ito po'y ma-i-apply po namin sa aming mga pang-araw-araw na buhay. Lord, I pray and look forward, Panginoon, sa susunod na linggo, sa mga ituturo mo po po sa amin, at hayaan mo ikaw po ang manguna po sa amin. Continue to bless each and every one of us all throughout the week. Marami salamat po. All these things we ask in your most precious and wonderful name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So once again, God bless every one of you and to God be all the glory.